So what we've been trying to do is put together a range of papers that look at controlling brain activity um, uh, from fly brains to human brains and looking at what it's taught us about um, how the brain functions to how can we change it when things go wrong. And how do you look at brain activity in the lab? What kind of techniques do you use? Um, I mean, you can record it with microelectrodes directly, but we are interested in altering it. So um, uh, basically, they're, they're, the old methods are sticking just an electrode into the brain or on top of the brain. And some very early experiments have been done um, during operations on humans like that, and putting an electrical current into the brain. And that activates nearby brain cells, and people start twitching an arm or uh, you know, reporting a sensation. So modern techniques, for instance, you insert genetically an opening, a channel into the brain cell, and then you shine light on it that makes the, the channel open and the, the neuron active. And then you can target specific types of cells. So that's the kind of range of techniques. There are some more indirect methods um, that have been used in humans with uh, magnetic fields and so on, but the uh, more direct, more precise ones are going at the cellular level. And what is it that you're trying to find out? What questions about the brain are you asking? Mm. Um, so the major, the technique initially has been employed to figure out what parts of the brain code for what. Because the basic problem is you have, brain, you have electrical activity all over the brain. And if it's happening here, you see something. If it's happening there, you feel something. If it's further forward, you might move your arm. But you're dealing always on the cellular level in the same currency. And what we're trying to figure out is what kind of patterns of activity of electricity in the brain give rise to different perceptions and functions. So is it just to do with the location or is it something to do with how active these neurons are, how many of them are active, these kinds of questions. And obviously the ultimate goal is to understand this in order to be able to uh, repair it when it fails. Does, it, does the research have a, a clinical application to it then? Mm, it's one of the fields where there is um, quite a lot of interaction between basic scientists uh, and um, uh, applied research. And we have a few papers in the special issues that look at this. There's one paper in the special issue looking at um, how you could get sensation out of an artificial limb. Try to imagine you pick something up or catch a ball without feeling what's going on in your hands. It's really, really difficult. Yeah. So there is a direct interaction between trying to figure out what these uh, neural signals mean and then uh, being able to put them back when, when they're gone. Um, what are the sort of future challenges in this field? Mm. They, so the, the n n newer developments are with precision in this. So it is, as I said, it's it's actually in some ways quite surprising that you can intervene at a tiny place in this whole circuit network that's the brain and get a consistent response out of it and uh, what is increasingly clear there's a distributed set of connections and brain cells that underlie our behavior I mean especially cognitive functions and the key thing will be to identify these neurons and um, stimulate them in the right pattern if if you want to um, generate some more complex um, behaviours. Is it possible to target single cells then or is that another sort of future? Yeah, no. it, that, that's possible now so that is also a, um, a group in Berlin has done this and we mm -hmm. have a paper about this in the special issue and you can um, get close to a cell and actually activate single brain cells now and look and, and see in, in rodents their effect on, 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 on behaviour so just inserting one electrical um, signal, and a spike we call it, into one brain cell can change um, uh, how the animal behaves. So you can target that signal to one cell? Yes. Wow, that's quite incredible. It is uh, quite amazing, but now we have to put this together again, and now we yeah. want this cell, this cell, and that cell, which are, for example, involved in oh, addiction behavior is one th a thing people research um, uh, with these techniques and say when we activate those in, in this kind of way or inhibit those can we for example break the link between a stimulus and an addictive behavior mm. or create it to understand how they interact so you can break down the network to build it back up again in a not a better way but in a way that could i mean a way to help yeah or to repair it or to break yeah. a, a link that is um n n not, not helpful healthy, yeah not helpful. yeah yeah 
Um, you're a member of our editorial board. Um, what made you decide to join? Oh, because I like extra work. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, as a scientist, you sit, you spend a lot of time on in your lab on a specific question, getting really deep in, into some something quite complex, but to the outside looking rather small. And it, and so, getting on the editorial board gives me a chance to look at other fields, at other um, at other topics, and decide what, what what's happening, what, what what are the ideas that are around. So, I remember one on. Um, eradicating um, um, infectious diseases on vaccination or you know tool use in, in primates it's really quite interesting to look at these things and being able to shape um, the kind of stories that, that go out. And how did you find doing a special issue yourself would you recommend it to anyone? Oh absolutely. <laughs> no, it was fun because it allows you to talk to people and put something together so to, to um, so I work on vision and how stimulation of, of the brain tells us about visual perception and the codes that underlie it. But obviously the same techniques are used in people who do fly behavior and, 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 and memory or used in the clinic to, to study um, um, maps of motor behavior. So I learned something about the techniques other people employ and how they employ, but also the, the wider kind of implications of this. So it was quite interesting to have a philosopher involved with a special issue and look at implications on philosophy and ethics and agency. What does it mean if, if we can actually interfere in these brain processes and what are the responsibilities we have when we do this. So I enjoyed it. It's a lot of extra work but it is, it is, it is fun and makes you think in different ways and I think that's what is great about it.